This video explains how to add a line segment and a curve to a ggplot2 plot in the R programming language. So without much talk, let's dive into the R code. So as a first step in this video, we need to create some example data, as you can see in lines two and three of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame called data is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data frame to the RStudio console by running line four of the code. And then you can see that our example data frame contains six rows and the two columns X and Y. And both of these columns contain numbers. In this tutorial, we want to draw our data using the ggplot2 package. And for that reason, we also need to install and load the package, as you can see in lines six and seven of the code. I have installed the package already. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line seven of the code. And then in the next step, we can use the functions of the ggplot2 package to draw our data in a ggplot2 plot, as you can see in lines nine and 10. So in this case, I'm creating a scatter plot. And for that reason, I'm using the geom point function. So after running lines nine and 10 of the code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new data object called ggp is appearing. And this data object contains our scatter plot, as you can see by running line 11 of the code, because after running this line of code, the scatter plot is appearing at the bottom right. At this point, we have not added any line segments or curves yet. So this is what we will do in the next part of this tutorial. So in lines 13 to 17 of the code, I'm using the data object ggp that we have just created. And then I'm adding to this the geom segment function. And within this function, I'm specifying the coordinates where our line segment should start. So in this case, on the x axis at the value 2.5 and on the y axis at the value 3. And I'm also specifying the ending points of our line segment. So after running lines 13 to 17 of the code, our plot is updated. And as you can see, we have added a straight line to our plot. In the next step, I want to show you how to modify the color, the size and the line type of this line segment. And we can do that as you can see in lines 19 to 26 of the code. So once again, I'm using our ggp object as a basis for our plot. And once again, I'm adding the geom segment function to our plot. And once again, I'm specifying the start and ending points of our line segment. However, this time I'm also specifying the color argument to be equal to a hex color code. Then I'm increasing the size of our line and I'm setting the line type of our line to be equal to dashed. So after running lines 19 to 26 of the code, you can see that our plot is updated once again. And this time we have added a dashed line with blue color and a larger size to our plot. It's also possible to draw multiple line segments to a plot. And this is what I want to show you in the next part of the code, starting in line 28. So as a first step of this example, we need to create a data set that contains all the coordinates and the colors of our lines that we want to add. So after running lines 28 to 32 of the code, this data set is created and we can print this data set to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 32 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a data set containing three rows and each of these rows contains the starting X and Y coordinates, the ending X and Y coordinates, as well as an indicator for the color of this line. And then in the next step, I'm using the geom segment function once again to add those lines to our plot. So as in the previous examples, I'm using the ggp object as a basis. Then I'm adding the geom segment function. However, this time I'm specifying within the geom segment function a new data set, which is equal to our lines data set that we have just created. And then I'm using the AES function to specify the aesthetics of our plot. And within the AES function, I'm setting the different arguments to be equal to the column names in our lines data set. So after running lines 35 to 41 of the code, our plot is updated once again. And as you can see, this time we have added three different line segments with different colors. And on top of that, we have even added a legend on the right side of the plot, which identifies the different lines. 
So until now, we have only drawn line segments. However, in this tutorial, I want to show you how to add line segments and curves. And for that reason, in the next step, we will add a curve to our plot. And we can do that, as you can see, in lines 43 to 47 of the code. And in this case, I'm using the geom curve function instead of the geom segment function. And within the geom curve function, I'm basically specifying the same values as in the geom segment function. So I'm specifying the coordinates of the starting points and of the ending points. So after running lines 43 to 47 of the code, you can see that we have added a curve to our plot. However, it's also possible to modify this curve. So in the next step, I want to modify the curvature, angle and NCP arguments to change the shape of our curve. So after running lines 49 to 56 of the code, you can see that our curve has been changed according to these values. It's also possible to add a line segment and a curve at the same time to the same ggplot2 plot. And this is what I want to show you in the next part of the code in lines 58 to 68. And in this case, I'm simply adding the geom segment function and the geom curve function to our ggp plot object. So after running lines 58 to 68 of the code, you can see that we have added a line segment with the color red and a curve with the color green. It's even possible to add line segments and curves to a facet plot. And this is what I want to show you in the last example of this tutorial, starting in line 70 of the code. So as a first step, we need to update our data frame so that it also contains group and subgroup indicators that we will use to create our facet plot. And we can do that, as you can see, in lines 70 to 72 of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame called data facet is created. And we can print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 73 of the code. And then you can see that this data set contains the same X and Y columns as our previously created data set. However, this time we have also created a main group indicator as well as a subgroup indicator. Now in the next step, we can draw a facet plot of our data using the facet grid function. So after running lines 75 to 77 of the code, a new plot object called ggp facet is appearing at the top right. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right by running line 78 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a facet plot based on our data, which is showing our three main groups, A, B, and C, as well as the two subgroups, A and B. Now, in the next step, I want to add line segments to certain panels of this facet plot. And for this, we once again need to create a data set which specifies the parameters of these lines. And we can do that, as you can see, in lines 80 to 86 of the code. So in these lines of code, I'm creating a data frame which contains the starting points, the ending points, the main group panels, and the subgroup panels as well as the colors. So after running lines 80 to 86 of the code, a new data set is appearing at the top right, which is called data facet lines. And if we print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console, you can see our values that we have specified before. And now in the final part of this tutorial, I want to show you how to add these line segments to certain panels of our facet plot using the geom segment function. So as a basis for our plot, we are using the ggp facet plot object that we have created before. Then we are adding to this the geom segment function. And within this function, we specify our lines data set as data. And then we are using the AES function to specify the aesthetics of our line segments. And we are also specifying the inherit.aes argument to be equal to false. So after running these lines of code, our plot is updated. And as you can see, we have added two line segments to different facets in our plot. And we have also added a legend on the right side of the plot, which specifies which of the lines corresponds to which color.
That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.